background with us, Manish Khanna, who's senior partner at Grand Thornton uh, India, joins us on the show with his perspective in the market as well. Uh, good to have you, Manish. Uh, what did you make of the policy event today and you know, how it really sets things for the future? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I think uh, Subharal, clearly the governor played his hand yesterday. Uh, he said that uh, inflation is a worry and secondly, it is not a monetary policy issue anymore. Uh, I think clearly, and that's how the credit policy today, the RBI policy today has come out, that essentially it is not a monetary policy. It is, it is not, you cannot tinker with the, with the repo rate, you cannot tinker with the bank rate. Uh, even if you do that, reduce it, demand is not going to grow up, go uh, any further than where, where it is right now. And what we really need is policy action. And that is the only thing which is going to get us out of the mess and morass that we are in. Uh, you know, we are staring at a 6.5% growth, which is official. Uh, will we be able to even deliver on that if uh, the way that we, uh, the, the way that we continue in terms of lack of policy or even, you know, considering we've got another blackout as we speak in uh, northern India and eastern India. So I think really it is, it, it's a call to arms that we need policy, we need implementation and we need action. Some, some flashes on that, and I don't know whether these actions really help uh, in the long run, but yeah, cabinet to take a decision on a diesel price hike. Now, this doesn't mean that there will be a hike in the first place. It's just that it's the cabinet will eventually decide on whether or not one rupee or two rupee increase that one actually cheer some investors in the oil marketing companies broadly might happen. I, I, don't, I don't really know if this means that there will be a hike in the first place. But yeah, for now, we know that the oil ministry is saying that the cabinet will decide on a diesel price hike. And Munish, that's the point really. I mean, a few moves like, say, maybe a diesel price hike or an FDI in retail, for that matter, an FDI in aviation, does that really release the stranglehold on the broader issues at large, which is that infra investments are not happening. There are tons of bottlenecks in decision making alone, let alone execution. And those don't get solved if indeed you raise a diesel price hike by a couple of bucks or you bring in FDI in aviation or, for that matter, retail as well. I, I really don't think so that that's, that's really going to impact where we are. Uh, you know, those are tinkerings, those are bells and whistles, but they don't change the fundamental. I think coal policy is, that's a critical thing. That needs to be addressed. Our power situation, that needs to be addressed. There are a whole host of infrastructure projects or even you know, construction projects which are stuck because of environmental issues, environmental mm -hmm. clearances. So I think that's where the basic, the thrust of the matter the thrust of all the efforts of the government should really be that how do we effectively address infrastructure issues. And by infrastructure, I don't mean only ports and roads, but environmental issues, approval issues, power, transportation, coal. I think coal is one of the most important things. Uh, we are getting these kind of grid situations primarily because uh, of uh, the short-sighted or the lack. It's not even short-sighted anymore. It's a lack of uh, policy initiatives on uh, power, which is one of the most critical aspects of uh, any growth economy. With the talk of uh, Mr. P. Chidamran becoming finance minister, you think there could be perhaps more news in terms of uh, reform decisions coming by uh, over the next two months? Do you expect that at all? I hope so. Uh, we, you know, if you live in India and you work in India, then you have to be an eternal optimist. Uh, so I'm hoping that yes, with Chidamram coming in, uh, you I do have a man dedicated who's seized of the problem uh, and who will do it. I hope that the uh, the opposition allows uh, the, the parliament to work, uh, the party to work, and to carry on some of the really essentially needed. Uh, policy implementation uh, programs what that we need. What in your mind would be that? I mean, essentially, uh, the, uh, opening up foreign investment for retail, for aviation. I mean, is, are those the starting points? Aviation point? and retail to me is it, it's just the tip. You know, I, I think one things like what the Prime Minister is trying to address today, the GAR, the indirect tax issues. I think we need to make the investment climate uh, much more friendly than where, what it is. Uh, we need to be welcoming. So it's, it, I don't think it's just that, okay, you change FDI because the moment we do it, then there is going to be all kinds of uh, uh, issues that are you favoring one particular industry or one particular uh, to do that. But I think overall, uh, there just needs to be a policy initiative which is uh, welcomes foreign investment, uh, provided it does not hurt the uh, economic, uh, the uh, strategic interests of the country. Uh, we've got I think we've got, I, I started to think how many pharma uh, FIBB applications are pending uh, just because no decision has been taken. And a lot of those, uh, I think, are very 
are ordinary approvals which just need to come out. So yes, I think we definitely need to look at increasing FDI, cross-sector, or just hastening the process. Uh, mm. Whether it is in aviation, pharma, retail, all of that is welcome. But more important than that is to create a climate mm. uh, which is investor-friendly um, and business-friendly. I think yeah. we've moved away from foreign investment to even domestic investment-friendly. Okay, Manish, just hold that thought. We just need to cut across. So, a quick word on your conversations with a uh, number of people across the globe as well. What's your what's your view on the fund flow situation? You think that uh, a couple of moves like this could bring back the funds, or are investors generally extremely skeptical about investing in India? I think uh, just looking at uh, the time of other economy that we are in, the kind of pent up demand that uh, we have in this country. Uh, the demographics uh, of the population, clearly what everyone rightly believes, that there is a significant potential upside in the Indian economy. Uh, there is a demand requirement for almost all kinds of products and services. There is infrastructure requirement. So the growth has to come in from countries like India, China, a couple of the other developing countries. So I think principally, fundamentally, no one doubts the fact that India sure. will absorb investments this is a place where you should come and invest and it is going to pay off. Uh, we just make it so hard uh, that right now it is not the flavor of the month. Okay. It is not the top of the mind. Uh, and at any given point of time, every business has certain resources. And today those resources seem to, uh, as a businessman, you'd make a decision uh, like Ellen Mittal just said, uh, okay. you know, yes, India is strategic but not for business purposes at this moment. But I think that if we just need to do some simple quick fixes, and if we do that, uh, I do believe that the, uh, the investment uh, monies will come back into the country. Fingers are crossed for that, Manish. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time out, accommodating this interview request and dropping by in our studios as well. Thank you. Thanks. Well, that's Grant Thornton with their view on the broader macro policy and the impact that it has had, if at all, on how people are viewing. Uh, the investment climate, not that the RBI really could do too much about that. Let's take a break on that note. We come back uh, and uh, talk uh, about, uh, well, a couple of specific stocks, Maruti Suzuki in particular as well, and of course get in the trading ideas at 255. A break, we come back in just moments from now.